Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're ranking the Harry Potter movies from worst to best. There's no Hogwarts without you, Hagrid. For this list, we'll be taking a hard look at the wizarding world and making tough choices about which films stand above the rest. If you're one of the few who haven't seen the movies, Accio spoilers. If we ranked one of your favorites too low, let us know in the comments below. Number 8. Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix The fifth book in the Harry Potter series is the longest, and yet the movie version of Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix is the second shortest in the franchise. That does not bode well for quality. What if after everything that I've been through, something's gone wrong inside me? What if I'm becoming bad? Even the worst movie isn't bad, though. It features perhaps Daniel Radcliffe's best performance and introduces us to a slew of new characters. But if we're getting into the nitty-gritty, so many cut aspects of the book negatively affected later films. That's illegal. But Cornelius doesn't know won't hurt him. If you didn't read the books, you might not understand the scope of Snape's relationship with Harry's parents. More importantly, you might think Sirius Black died via killing curse, which is drastically different from the book. <laughs> they just didn't make the right changes. Number 7. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets It is as we feared, Minerva. The Chamber of Secrets has indeed been opened again. When Chris Columbus was brought on to direct the first Harry Potter movie, he seemed like an excellent choice. He was good with kids and had experience making them feel comfortable on set. But by the franchise's second installment, fans were ready for something a bit more exciting. You're the heir of Slytherin. You're Voldemort. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, despite its Voldemort reveal and giant snake antagonist, is probably the most boring Potter outing. And with a film that comes in at a whopping 161 minutes, you can't afford to be dull. What do you do? Stop. No! Outside the ending, nothing too thrilling happens in this movie. And after the first film, Columbus's visual style just wasn't cutting it anymore. Number 6. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire Harry! I protest! Harry, you put your name in the Goblet of Fire. No, sir. You asked one of the older students to do it for you? No, sir. You're absolutely sure? Yes, yes sir. The fourth Potter installment is another book-to-film adaptation that suffers greatly from numerous storytelling choices. The Goblet of Fire movie has great action sequences and captures the British boarding school vibe very well. But it removes numerous side characters, such as Ludo Bagman and Winky the House Elf, therefore removing the huge weight those characters bear on the plot. Plus the film's big reveal that Mad-Eye Moody is actually Death Eater Barty Crouch Jr. in disguise is apparent from the jump. Barty Crouch Jr. I'll show you mine if you show me yours. One of the earliest images in the film is Barty Jr. casting the Dark Mark. When we see Mad-Eye make some of the same facial expressions, it's so obvious it's almost insulting. Which of you can tell me how many unforgivable curses there are? Three, sir. And they are so named? Because they are unforgivable. The use of any one of them will... will earn you a one-way ticket to Azkaban, correct? Number 5. Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince this sixth Harry Potter book is one of the darker entries in the wizarding world. Please. Have a cadaver. While the characters have been spending the last few books growing up, Albus Dumbledore's death is a signal to readers that all innocence is lost. But the movie adaptation chose to spend more time focusing on a different aspect of growing up, puberty. It's no joke. I'm in love with her! All oh, right, fine, you're in love with her. Have you ever actually met her? Oh. Can you introduce me? The Half-Blood Prince is definitely the horniest of all Potter adaptations, and so much of that teen angst lends itself to a fun time at the movies. But by focusing on the funnier aspects of the book, the creators end up foregoing so many of the darker aspects of the story, rendering Dumbledore's eventual demise jarring in the wrong way. Seriously misunderstood creature spiders are. 
the eyes, I reckon. They unnerve some folk. Not to mention the pincers. Number four, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, part one. The what? what? The what? The Deathly Hallows. I assume you're all familiar with the tale of the three brothers. Yeah. Yes. No. Some fans might consider the seventh movie in the franchise Lesser Potter, but we maintain that part one of The Deathly Hallows is one of the better book-to-movie adaptations. Not only that, but it allows its three young leads a chance to prove just how much they've grown as actors over the course of the films. This is completely mental. Completely? The world's mental. Come on. We've got all cracks to find. Harry, Ron, and Hermione spend most of the movie by themselves, camping their way across the English countryside. All that time spent alone allows us to see so many nuanced and empathetic interactions between the Golden Trio. Do you know why I listen to that radio every night, dear? To make sure I don't hear Ginny's name. Or Fred. Or George. Or Mo. Oh, you think I'm not listening to? You think I don't know how this feels? Oh, you don't know how it feels! Your parents are dead! You have no family! <laughs> Go! Most of the plot issues in the film are left over from what previous installments left out. We don't want to hold part one accountable for other movies' failings. Such a beautiful place. To be with friends. Number three, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part Two. Harry Potter. The boy who lived. Come to die. Some might argue that the final installment of the Harry Potter franchise changed too much, and they're not wrong. From Harry's confrontation with Severus Snape, to his final showdown with Voldemort, to Ron and Hermione's first kiss, plenty of aspects of the story were changed from book to movie. But even with those changes, one thing that Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part Two gets right is the weight of the emotional stakes. They didn't die in vain. But you will, because you're wrong. <laughs> Harry's heart did beat for us, for all of us. Although some things unfold a little differently than fans expected, director David Yates absolutely nails the feeling of the thing. It's hard to finish out a series, but he did a pretty great job. Plus, as far as any fantasy action movies go, you could do a lot worse than part two. <laughs> Number two, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Time to go back where it all started. It's not real, the ceiling. It's just bewitched to look like the night sky. I read about it in Hogwarts, a history. Although we might not love what Chris Columbus did with the second Harry Potter movie, his first outing as director is nothing short of magical. With so much anticipation surrounding Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, it could have been so easy for things to go wrong. But the way the filmmakers rendered magic on screen, from Hogwarts to spells to fantastical creatures, is everything we could have dreamed of. Holy cricket, you're Harry Potter. I'm Hermione Granger, and you are? Um, Ron Weasley. Pleasure. Production design aside, we couldn't have asked for a better cast. Emma Watson, Rupert Grint, and Daniel Radcliffe perfectly embody their characters, and are bolstered by British acting royalty. That was bloody brilliant! Oh, thank you for that assessment, Mr. Weasley. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. If we're being honest, we'd sit down to watch pretty much any Harry Potter movie, even the ones we don't think are so great. But if we had our choice, we would always go with Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. That felt good. Not good, brilliant. The third installment of the franchise is the first one that feels like something more than just a kid story. It's got the advantage of being adapted from one of the better books, but it also has a distinct visual style we can't get enough of. 
Plus, the film features the introduction of beloved characters Sirius Black and Remus Lupin. Well, 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 Hermione, you really are the brightest witch of your age I've ever met. Enough talk, Remus! Come on, let's kill him! Wait! I did my waiting! Twelve years of it! In Azkaban! Casting Gary Oldman and David Thewlis in those parts was a stroke of genius, and their talent really makes the movie sing. For once the lovers never really leave us. And you can always find them. In here. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.